direct result of some of the comments that I have read um, that you guys have written on some of the videos. And one, one of the comments that, or the questions that people had was, I went ahead and I've done videos on how to do herringbone rope and how to do spiral herringbone rope, but I haven't ever in those videos mentioned how you bring those uh, columns that you end up with at the end back together to end it off. And so we're doing a video today on how to make those columns come back together and create a nice uh, professional looking ending on it. So let's take a closer look at the beads here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This one happens to be a spiral rope and you can see that when you're doing herringbone the stitch actually connects low in the stitch, so you end up with what I call little towers, these little columns that are not attached at the top of the, the stitch. And so you need a way to bring those back together to end this off pretty. When we started the spiral herringbone, in this case, uh, we ladder stitched a section together and then started creating our herringbone off of that ladder sti stitch base. So what we're going to do on this end is when we straighten these back up and bring them together, we want to mimic the way that looked on the first end on this second end. Uh, this will be the exact same technique if you're using uh, straight herringbone as opposed to this spiral, just so you know. One other thing that I wanted to point out here, this is a, a design decision on your part. Here when I started this off, I used all a single color of Delica and it wasn't until I started doing the actual spiral itself that I brought in the second color. On this one I wanted to show you I actually used the colors right up to the end. So when I was actually creating that ladder stitch to start this off, I did it knowing where my colors were going to be in the spiral. And so when I ended it off on the other end, um, I kept that same color um, pattern going in the end. So I think what I'm going to do uh, when I'm demoing this is I'm going to show you how to do it with the color pattern because that's the more difficult of the two. If you were just going to use a single color then obviously you would just use a single color bead but showing you how to do the, d the two colors will be a little bit more challenging. Okay, this particular piece is a piece that I found in my stash of random little pieces of beadwork that I've had for years and years. And uh, I actually remember making this. Um, this particular piece is almost 10 years old. And you can tell that because I actually have thread on this instead of fire line. And you can see how kinky that thread was. I actually had finished off this end and I cut the end off and pulled back so that I could have some thread. So this is thread that is 10 years old that was in this piece. Anyway, just thought that was kind of interesting. So here is where I've decided now that I'm going to end this piece off. And what I'm going to do first with the spiral, and this is one difference between a spiral and a plain straight herringbone rope, is I'm actually going to do one round of straight herringbone uh, first before I do the ladder, the, the faux ladder stitch part. The reason is I want to start straightening out these columns a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the color pattern. So here I was picking up one of the light pink and one of the dark pink. So I'll still pick up a light and a dark. And in the spiral, if you'll recall, you go down more than one bead, but in just plain straight herringbone, you're just go passing down through one. So that's what we're going to do is pass down through one, pass up through one. This is going to start bringing those columns a little bit closer together. Looks like my thread caught a little bit there as I was doing that. Okay, there we go. So light pink, dark pink, down one, up one. If you need refreshers on either spiral herringbone or plain herringbone, I will uh, pop links up for those two videos because right now I'm just concentrating on how we're finishing this off. Okay, and it looks like this is going to be, I think, my last stitch with just the regular plane. So I'm going down one and up one. 
Okay. So now I've got, you've actually got two options here. One is because we want to do this particular ending in this color pattern, I could actually just do another round of plain uh, herringbone where I'm going down one and up one, or I could add two at a time, uh, I'm sorry, two segments. So I would add two light pink, two dark pink, and then go down one, up one, two light pink, two dark pink, and just um, circle stitch around those ends to end this off. What I'm going to do is, because I'm going to decide that I don't want to add any too much additional length, so we're actually going to just do another round here of the regular herringbone. So down one and up one. It's funny to be working with thread again. I you know don't use thread too often, um, but it just ha it does have a nice feel to it. These days, instead of using Nymo thread, my choice of thread would be 1G. Um, it's a slightly better thread. It has um, it doesn't fray as much, and it has springiness without kind of uh, being ridiculous. Okay, one more stitch here. So my down one, up one. And then we're going to take a closer look because I'm going to show you how this is kind of straightening up a little bit now. Okay, so here you can see where here we've been on a diagonal, diagonal, and now can you see how this is kind of starting to straighten here instead of going off to the side? That's exactly what we want. So at this point, we've got all the beads that we need here. We just need to attach all these little columns at the top. And so this is where we're just going to start circling around. So I want to get to where the V opening gap is. And I'm going to do this connection two beads tall because that's going to mirror what was on the other end. So here's where one of these gaps is. So I came down to, I'm going to go up to, and then I'm going to circle back around to the two on the opposite side of this gap. And there we go. Tighten it up, brought it together. You're basically ladder stitching these things together. Here we go. We're going to go to the next gap. Here's our next gap. You're going to come up the other side, and you're just circling your thread around two beads on either side of this gap to bring them together and straighten them up. That's all you have to do. Oops. Like so. Okay. And then because um, spiral herringbone, there's no step up, you do end up with one column that's going to be a little bit taller than the other. You can see kind of the, the size disparity here. What you're going to do is once we stitch these together, it's not going to be nearly as noticeable. So we're still going to do it the same way, like so, across the gap, stitching the two together, totally missing the beads on that one. There we go. Like this. And back up again. There. So it's still going to have one little segment right here, but you can kind of finagle it a little bit, mess with your tension a little bit, kind of tapped it down, and now you can barely see that there's that little jog there. So we, we're kind of sewing the jog down, for lack of a better term. And then at this point, that ending, that end is now it's all pretty. So here's the difference between the one where we've did the same colors all the way along, and here's one where we did a single color and kind of created almost like a little end cap. Your choice, which one you want to use. And then you're ready at this point now to attach your clasp. So it's not nearly as difficult as you might think. I hope this helps you out, and pay attention uh, to what's going on. Ask your questions below because I do read them, and one day one of your questions might get answered in a video too. Thanks so much.